Okay, so today is an introduction to transformations and reflections, which are um, not going to be brand new for us. They should be familiar from some of our middle school math, although it's probably been a little while. So what I'd like you to do is to start out to looking at the first four graphs and decide which transformation do you think is a, being applied to our original graph to get our new graph. And so I'm going to introduce a little bit of terminology here. Um, looking at an original image, um, we see that they're called just D, E, and F like this. And then the final image um, is going to be D prime, F prime, and E prime. And that prime is what identifies it as the final image. Whereas without the prime, that is our pre-image. So go ahead and think about what do you think is happening to each of our four graphs that is allowing us to get from our pre-image to our final image. So when I'm looking at question one, I can see that we have um, the relationship from D to F here is um, kind of has this line of symmetry right here. So I can actually identify this as a reflection and when I identify it as a reflection, I should identify over which line. And so that is over the y-axis. For this second question, what I'm noticing is that um, I can't find a line of symmetry here. So it looks like that must be some kind of, um, and it does, well, let's see, D, E, and F, the relationship between them, I don't have it be in the same position. It's not like D, E, and F have remained in the same position. So that to me tells me that there's a reflect, um, I'm sorry, a rotation here. And how do I know where it's rotated? That is going to be our lesson for tomorrow. So how many degrees and around what point? That's our lesson for tomorrow. This one I can see the relationship from D to E is exactly the same in each of these in the pre-image and the final image. So that tells me that it's been translated and I could identify how far down it's gone and how far over it's gone. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. So translated down six and over one, two, three, four, five to the left. And then what's obvious to me about this fourth one is that it's not the same size. The final image has shrunk. So uh, the word, some new vocabulary that we're going to use is the word dilated. And dilated means to stretch or shrink. And in this case, from the pre-image to the post-image, we have shrunk our graph. So now on your paper, go ahead and draw in any possible lines of symmetry. Pause this video while you do that, and then you can check your answer. Okay, so hopefully you've drawn your lines of symmetry. So I see that our A has one line of symmetry I can draw in. I see on our X there are two lines of symmetry I could draw in. But on our Z, there are no lines of symmetry for me to draw in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here is define the word isometry. So a, isometry is a specific kind of transformation. So if a transformation is an isometry, what that means is that the original figure and its image are congruent. And what that means is that isometry, that transformation, is maintaining the distance between every point. So it's maintaining the exact same relationship. So I didn't stretch or compress the shape. Um, the shape is exactly the same size. And I could get from the pre-image to the final image simply by moving, reflecting, 
um, or rotating and it would land on top and be the exact same size and shape. So when I look at this first one and I'm trying to decide what type of transformation, because my relationship as far as position of K, J, and L has changed, I know that I either have a reflection or a rotation and I don't find a line of symmetry. So that tells me that this is a rotation. And then to decide if it's an isometry, I have to decide if it's maintained congruence from the pre-image to the final image. And what I see is that we have these two sides are still congruent. These two sides are still congruent. And then we have that right angle, so that third side has to still be congruent. So yes, that is an isometry. The, si the size and shape of our um, image did not change. So I want you to give parts B and C a try. And once you have done example one, parts B and C, then you are going to give example two a try. You're going to, on your paper, reflect each point over the x-axis, and then you are going to graph and label that new final image and list your coordinates. Make sure that when you label your image that you label them correctly with a, um, with a prime. So see here it's labeled P prime, Q prime, R prime. When you label them on the graph, make sure that they have those primes. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at example three together. So it's given us four vertices of a quadrilateral PQRS, and we are going to reflect this over the line X equals two. So the first thing I have to do is draw my line X equals two. And I know that because it's X equals, it's telling me that X has to be two no matter what. So that should be a vertical line. So I'm gonna draw my vertical line in at X equals two. And when I'm reflecting over this line, one thing that's really important is to make sure that I'm always calculating that distance to the line, but that that distance is a perpendicular distance. If I don't calculate it perpendicularly, then I'm not really finding the distance from the point to the line. I'm finding any other distance, but not the shortest distance. So if I count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm, I'm in the middle. I've counted seven from P to there. And now I'm going to count seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so this is my final image for P. So if I identify what is that point, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one, two, three, four. So that's the point nine, four. Okay, and then I'm gonna do that for all four of these. So let's see, here's another one, one, two, three over. So one, two, three more. And that is going to be my Q prime. Make sure that prime shows up nice and good. And that's going to be one, two, three, four, five over and one down. So five, negative one. And I'm going to do R. So I'm going to calculate that distance. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to do that again. One, two, three, four, five. That's my R prime. And if I count that, six, seven over, and then one, two, three, four, five, six down, so that's negative six. And last but not least, we have S, and that's a ways over, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is my S prime. And my S prime is 
there at 11 over and then negative three down. And so the very last thing I need to do is go ahead and connect the new points that I have drawn. And now I have reflected my shape. So if you had trouble with example two, reflecting over the x-axis, go back and give that another try now that we've done example three together. So now take a look at example four and give that a try. You are graphing over the line y equals two. Okay, now if I were stuck graphing this, the first thing I would want to do is make sure that I am drawing in y equals two. That's going to be a horizontal line because that's when every y point is equal to two. So here is my line of reflection. And I know that it might seem weird because we're going to reflect um, over a line that intersects or goes through our um, pre-image, but that's not going to change anything that we're going to do. We're still going to count our distance. So A goes two down here. So I'm going to go two more. Oh, and my line isn't drawn very well, but there it is. So A prime is going to be negative two, zero. And then C, that was only a distance of one, so I'm going to go one more. And so that's five, three. That's C prime, and I should label this as A prime. And then last but not least, here's B. That's one, two, three. So one, two, three. And that's B, and that's B prime. And um, let's see, that is negative four, five. And there we go. There is our new graph that I can connect these lines. And there's my reflection. It looks a little wonky, but that's what it is. All right, so the last thing for today is for you to do the closer. So in question five, you're going to do some good, clear, concise, but thorough description. And for example six, you're going to figure out how did um, Jenny's teacher immediately know that she was wrong. Um, so you're going to do examples five and six as a closer. And when you finish them, you can turn your packet, your notes packet into your substitute. And you will get those notes pack, note packets back. Um, but you'll get them back on Tuesday. Uh, I'm sorry, on Wednesday.